baking to do. I have a list as long as Santa's naughty list of how many festive recipes I want to put together. Lots of cookies, lots of like treats. I have a savory recipe too, but I'm going to start off by making caramels. Caramel, however you want to pronounce it, I'm pumped. It starts off on the stove top. Just a few ingredients, and when I saw this recipe, I thought, this is great. Such a classic recipe that I have never made before. But you know, you see people do it and you're like, they make it look so easy, I could probably do that. Do I have a candy thermometer? No, but I feel like I can make it work. And if I can't, well then I will fail. Yeah, that's a lot of sugar. Four cups of sugar we're starting off with. I don't know how many caramels this makes, but it better make a few. I'm making several recipes. Some are traditional and you just gotta have them on your Christmas dessert table. And then some of them are like, oh, I've never done that before. Like this one, is caramel a staple in your house? Because it never was in mine growing up, but who knows? That's why you gotta try new foods because they might be good. Your kids might fall in love with it, you might fall in love with it, and then decide, yep, I'm gonna have that every year for the rest of my life. Two sticks of butter. Oh my word, two cups of corn syrup. Let me see if I have it in my bag over here. I just got home from the grocery store. Buying the things that I need for these dessert recipes. You guys, I spent $35 on melting chocolate. Not worth it. I mean, it might be worth it. I spend like $35 a month on grapes, and that's definitely not worth it. Not in that bag. I can't find it. <laughs> All right, I did find it. It was the last two bottles of corn syrup on the shelf. You know people, they're like, no, the high fructose corn syrup. Well, I say, give it to me. I'm not even sure if this is what they're talking about. No, there's no high fructose corn syrup in this, but it's literally corn syrup. I don't know the difference. Two cups of this going in, which just happens to be an entire bottle. Corn syrup is a staple for every Christmas. I have a few recipes that call for corn syrup, one of which is my all-time favorite, rum balls. What is your all-time favorite Christmas dessert recipe? If I could have rum balls every day of the year, I'd be a happy gal. But would they feel special on Christmas? See, I don't know. Sometimes I'll make them during Easter for funsies. You only live once, you know? All right, my patience is up with that. I don't even know if I'm doing this right, so let me read the directions. <laughs> salt, butter, corn syrup, salt, sugar. I said salt twice, so I guess I gotta add some of that in. And then that's it. Throw this crap on the stove top. Mix it until it starts to melt. I guess, <laughs> I guess I should reference the directions once again. No doubt I will set off my smoke detector with this. You guys, just a little bit fell off and two minutes in, I gotta turn my vent fan on. <laughs> burn, baby, burn. So mix it until it's all melted and it comes to a boil. I'm not quite there yet, but the next step is very labor intensive, okay? It calls for two cans of evaporated milk and you're just supposed to do a little splash and then mix it in. Now that it's coming up to a boil, take the evaporated milk, just a little, oh that was probably, that was way more than she did in the video. Half of that, tablespoon at a time, makes it, who is supposed to take 10 to 15 minutes each can? I did not account for this amount of time. I'm gonna go a little bit faster than that. If my caramels suffer the consequences, I will be okay with that. Who has the time? I guess if you're making this one recipe alone, yeah, sure, go for it. Just pull up a chair and hang out and do your thing. But I have about 17 recipes to make, so I gotta get this show on the road. You, it's starting to spit at me. You're also supposed to stir continuously if you didn't gather that. I am on to my second can. It has proudly been five minutes, a <laughs> little bit at a time. I mean, a little bit is subjective, I'm just saying. I'm keeping it at a high, high temperature. I'm keeping this thing at a rapid boil. If Aunt Edna wants to take 30 minutes to make her special caramels, that's on her. I'm gonna make the same amazing caramels in a fraction of the time. I should've got a bigger pot. I am not sure this is gonna work out. Oh boy, you're about to see a catastrophe. I'm disappointed in myself and you should be too. I'm gonna have to wash two dang pots. Ooh. Good news is if I get to it fast enough, it should be fine. There we go. Hey, it's like nothing ever happened. So I don't have a candy thermometer, but I do have this. Is it gonna work the same way? I don't, I doubt it, but let's find out. Okay, I was supposed to get to 238. I feel like this is working pretty well. 238 and not a decibel further. Oh gosh, 
I, okay, how are we gonna get this hotter? I don't know if this is accurate. I'm just gonna wait till it's like that golden brown color. I feel like we're right there, almost. Did you see that color change? I know you're farther away. Gosh, this steam, my fingers are burning. Next, my back is gonna hurt. Okay, it's not really coming up on camera, but it does have a slight golden color to it. I think it's gonna get even more caramelly color from here. Let's check on that temp. 23, come on, come on, yeah. Oh, it's a slow burn if you get it on your fingers. It's like popping, so I, somehow I just can't help it. All right, let's hope for, yes, a couple more degrees and we're done. Things are bubbling away. I put this mitten on. Oh my gosh, it's saving my hand. Let's see if we've reached temperature yet. 138 is what we're looking for. Come on. Not quite. It turned off, what does that mean? Five, <laughs> six, almost there. All right, we got it. I'm just going to put it in a nine by 13 pan that's lined with parchment paper. And if you don't have a candy thermometer, I would say you could totally do it without one. I don't know. Just wait until it gets really thick and a nice, ooh, fire, a nice amber color. Like so, and even I like got a little bit of burnt pieces, but that's okay, I'll just roll that in. I'm going to put this in my fridge, freezer, let it set, and then I'll make the caramels. Caramel, caramel, okuna matata, is this too hot for me to taste test? Yes. <laughs> Don't do that, but the flavor. Oh, I think I burned my fingerprints off, that was hot. I bought little wax papers off of Amazon to roll the caramels up when we get to that point. Um, I don't know where they are, I'm gonna have to look for them. <laughs> I know I bought them though, I saw them come in. So next up, I'm over sugar already. Uh, it won't last long, don't worry. I'm gonna throw together a savory snack mix. Another recipe that claims it's like the best of the best, better than the rest, you've never had anything this good, you know what I mean? So it's kind of versatile. You can use any kind of salty crackers that you like or have on hand. So I'm going to do a mix of pretzels. I have the itty bitty mini pretzels. I have some white cheddar Cheez-Its and some club crackers, but the mini ones, I thought that would be perfect. And, oh good, I was hoping I had some more of these on hand. I bought two boxes of these. I don't know what reason. I think they were buy one, get one free, and I needed some. Oh, birthday party, mermaid birthday party. Anyway, I have a ton left, because we don't typically eat Cheez-Its. And by Cheez-Its, I mean goldfish. <laughs> All right, here we are. I don't really know the recipe. I don't know where my phone is. I've lost it. My pocket? Found it. Isn't my pop socket cool? It's like a mix CD. <laughs> oh my goodness. Ooh, 16 cups. I don't know if I bought enough for this. 16 cups of any kind of salty. This is not a big enough bowl. It's not. Here we go. Nothing like good old Big Bertha. Gotta bust it out. Ugh. One cup. This better be the best of the best. That's what it claims. And you know I scour the internet to try to find the best of the best recipes to make for you. I do it for you. All right. Two cups. It's gonna take a while. All right, this is eight cups, so I'm gonna do some of these. Probably the whole bag, actually. Some, the rest of those, the whole bag. And then just, you know, the whole bag of these, and then more of these. I don't know why I waste my time with measuring cups, but here we are, 16 cups. Ooh, you know what? I could just eat this. This looks good, I'm done. This is it guys, the famous snack mix. Actually, I love this feeling of throwing away bags and boxes. All right, what's next? 16. Oh my heck, you guys, get ready for it. This is so good. He's right, it's the best. Are you ready for it, Taylor Swift style? One cup of oil. But if you break it down, it's really not that bad. I have three bags that I got from the grocery store and every time I go to Find something, it's always in the last place I look. You know how it is. So to the oil, I'm going to add one teaspoon of lemon pepper, and I just grabbed the Lowry's seasoning. I don't know, I've never had it before. 
It smells really nice, I could dig it. One teaspoon of dill. I feel like you can't skimp on this. Dill just has such a fresh flavor. I'm doing a heaping teaspoon because that's how I live my life. And then one teaspoon of garlic powder and one packet of ranch seasoning. I just have this powder and I think it equates to three tablespoons. It's been a while since I used this. So I'm gonna do like a heaping. Give this a little mix. I'm a seasoning gal and I feel like I should double up on that. I'm just saying. I'll leave it, I will leave it. Next step is to just douse it in the oil. Make sure I get all of it in there. Oh my heck, lots of waiting around. Okay, mix this together and then you let it sit for one hour. Ugh, why? Not only that, but then you have to bake it once the hour's up. Patience is a virtue, and I think these last two recipes are really a good indicator of that. All good things come to those who wait. Um, I am impatient, so I'm gonna take a dive in here. Yeah, this is great. I would double this. I would, ooh, this is a great neighbor gift. I think I'm just gonna take the bowl and like watch a movie, you know? This next recipe. Ooh, Wildcats, go Wildcats. All right, my next recipe calls for the KitchenAid. Gonna bust it out. And it's weird, it's one that I've never heard of before. Sweetened condensed milk snowballs. I have to sneeze all that lemon pepper. <coughs> the worst. I think two and I'm good. Only a few ingredients for this one. You do, <coughs> just kidding, it was three. You do cook it in the oven, so I guess I could preheat it. Cool. Through 320 degrees, and all right, let's start. It calls for butter, one cup of butter. Whip that for several minutes. I feel like I have a box that's already open, I do, okay. So one cup is two sticks, and while this is beating in the mixer, I'm gonna gather the rest of the ingredients. It's called good time management, okay? I'm trying not to be in my kitchen all night long. Lionel Richie style. I don't know if it calls for a whisk or a paddle attachment. I could read to find out, but whatever. All right. So the butter's nice and light. I'm going to add to it sweetened condensed milk, but only half a cup. You know, with the rest of the sweetened condensed milk, I feel like Maybe we should double the recipe because how much is in here? Maybe a cup and a half, I don't know. However much it would take to use this whole can. I also saw somewhere that you can make caramel just by warming sweetened condensed milk up. I feel like that's essentially what we just made on the stove top, but what do I know? This is really thick, so half a cup going in, mixing it with the butter. Wrap it up. I'm gonna wipe the sides down, but this is also the point where you can add extract as well. So if you have a certain flavor, that you're into, that you wanna add almond would be fantastic. That's my personal favorite. We have a nut allergy in the house. If it's not a specific nut recipe, I'd rather stay away from it. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of vanilla here. Keep whipping it up. The texture of this looks so smooth and creamy and fluffy. I'm going to add, it's been several minutes since I've been beating it. I scrape the bowl down again. Two cups of flour and one tablespoon of powdered sugar. Just kidding, baking powder. But you know what you could do with the rest of that condensed milk poured over ice cream? Alex loves that. Okay, this looks really weird. I am going to take a taste test. No need to dare salmonella because there are no eggs. That tastes weird. Hmm, okay. By weird, I mean it's very Flowery, not so much sweet and buttery. It made my temperature rise. I don't know how to explain it other than that. It made me hot. I don't know if it's in a good way. I'm gonna take my cookie scoop and just scoop some out. You know how when you make snowball cookies? Yeah, that's what these are, but with sweetened condensed milk. But also I think snowball cookies have, what do they have on them? Nuts. They have nut, this is a nut-free snowball cookie. Can't wait to bake out all the salmonella in the flour, because I know that's what you were thinking. There you can still get salmonella from the flour. Trust me, I know I've gotten it before. From Cracker Barrel. I think the sad part about these cookies, that if they are the most amazing things I've ever made for this holiday season, it only makes like one pan. Granted, this is a very large pan, but what if I end up eating half of it? 
This is how many it made. I'm gonna throw them into a 320 degree oven for about 12 minutes and then I'm gonna sprinkle with some powdered sugar. I'm moving right on to the next recipe. I'm not gonna wash my bowl. I don't care that much. It's fine. The flavors of that are so mild. It's not gonna bother anyone or anything. The next thing I'm gonna make are peanut butter. I don't know what they're called. Peanut butter Christmas trees. You can make any shape that you want. It's essentially like a Reese's peanut butter tree but homemade you can change the shape you can why is this better i don't know you can spend 30 minutes making them or drag your happy bum to target where you could just buy a bag for like four bucks but you know preservatives and all that stuff oh fresh peanut butter man there's something so great about jiff it's just so creamy and dreamy little chocolate chip sprinkled on this and i don't even need to make the christmas trees you know what i mean but here i go anyway Half a cup of butter, quarter cup of sugar, two cups of peanut butter, and then a little bit of salt, a little pinch of salt. I probably should have whipped the butter up first, but that's okay, I didn't. So I'm gonna mix it all together now. Well, it always works out, doesn't it? You probably should cream the butter and sugar first before you add the peanut butter, but that's my life and you know what? Everything will turn out just fine. I'm adding a little bit of vanilla extract and then four cups of powdered sugar and then whip this up just took these out of the oven they look fantastic they might not completely look done but if you can see on some of them the bottoms are just slightly turning golden brown and that is perfect i'm gonna let them sit on the sheet pan for five minutes and then i'll dust them with powdered sugar once five minutes has passed i'm just going to sprinkle them oh goodness gracious with some powdered sugar it's snowing outside. What's the song about snowing? Snow. It's a marshmallow world in the winter when the snow is on the ground. I don't know it. It's a tinted face. It's a hunk about it all year round. There it is. Delicious little snowball. Mm -hmm. Gotta go in for a taste test. <coughs> oh my God. <coughs> I just inhaled a ton of powdered sugar. These are great. That's so good. It's so good. I mean, how can it not be? It's literally sugar, butter, flour. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cheers, that's great. It's a marshmallow world in the winter. This is such a great option to have as a snowball cookie if you are nut free. And I'm so glad to have it. It was one of my favorite cookies that we made this year. I would definitely make it again. It was quick and easy and delightful. I'm worried this is a little too crumbly for me to be able to roll out on the parchment paper. I don't know, it forms together. And you know what, now I'm thinking, I probably should have made this with the protein powder that I have before I've made protein balls like this, like peanut butter buckeyes, but they're protein. Yeah. Instead of powdered sugar, you just use protein powder and it's fantastic, so. All right, I'll give this a try. I'm just taking like half the dough. I'm gonna roll it out as best I can. I don't know, this is so crumbly. Instagram makes everything look so easy. Because it is. I'm gonna grab a rolling pin and I'm gonna put a piece of parchment paper on top and just try to roll it out. It says a quarter of an inch thick. Yeah, I'll try to see what I can do. All right, still crumbly, but workable. I don't really know how to describe this. All right, I'm gonna grab my cookie cutters. I'm just gonna go with the traditional Christmas tree. Meredith always has me do a cat for her lunchbox whenever I make sandwiches or something. <gasps> Look, it stayed together. Oh well, fingers crossed, let's not talk too soon. I have another sheet of parchment paper. Oh no, wait, no I don't. Okay, yeah, oh, it fell apart. Mostly my fault. Who else is there to blame? <laughs> All right, I can kind of like press it back together and it's fine, but you know, you're supposed to dip these in chocolate, like melted chocolate. I don't know if this is gonna keep its shape, but I'm gonna throw it in the fridge and cross my fingers. Oh my word, the amount of compliments I got on these, not only because Hello is a Reese's holiday tree, a staple, but because it's like, what? You made these homemade? And they're like, how did you make them to look this good? Do you know what I mean? So it was a process to get them to roll out. It wasn't that difficult. It was quite easy. It was just time consuming. So I would recommend making these. They were very impressive, I guess is the word I would choose. And also delicious. <laughs> Here are the little beauties. I'm gonna throw them into the freezer for about 30 minutes just so they harden up. 
and then I'm gonna dip them into chocolate, but I'll show you that as I do it. In the meantime, I am going to cook the cracker mixture because it's been that long, it took me forever to punch out those Christmas trees. It says to layer it on a cookie sheet. I might need two of them or just mix them half, I'm probably just gonna mix them halfway in between. Uh, I'm gonna get two. It only cooks for 15 minutes at 215 degrees. I don't know, it's really good. I feel like you could just eat it like this. All right, here we go, into the oven. In the meantime, I'm going to throw together a recipe from this book, cookbook. It's so late, normally I'm in bed at this hour. Nice to meet you, I am a grandma. By the way, what, oh my gosh, I flipped right to it. <laughs> what name are you gonna be called when you become a grandma? Or you are a grandmother, what do they call you? Mimi, Mima, Gaucho, Nani, Oma, Abuela, Grandma, Grandmother, Proper. I don't know, I haven't decided yet. I don't know why I went on that tangent, but here we are. Joanna Gaines cookbook. Excited about this recipe. I feel like how can you mess up brownie cookies? If there's a way, I'm gonna find it. But until then, I'm gonna gather all the ingredients I need to make these luscious delights. It calls for some highly delectable, what does she call it? Dutch processed cocoa powder. Well, I'm hoping good old Nestle does the trick because that's what I have. I might have Hershey too, which I feel like is a step above, but I'm gonna use what I have left. I think I just broke my wrist. Oh, how do I have peanut butter all over me? You're not a mess, I'm a mess. Oh, I'm stepping in dough. Mmm, still good. <laughs> Straight off my little piglets. All right, you need some eggs and stuff, but we'll get there when we get there. Oh my heck, of course, Joanna Gaines does this to me again. In a microwave safe bowl. Nothing can ever just be one pot wonder for her, can it? So, into said microwave safe dish. I'm going to melt some chocolate. But first I'm gonna hydrate. Pure fast the soul. That's actually my least favorite cup that we own. I don't know why I'm using it. Just the smell of this chocolate just reminds me of rumbles. I can't wait to eat rumbles. I can't wait. Sometimes I make healthy rumbles. It just doesn't hit the spot the same, you know. Two and a half cups. Gonna microwave it, melt it, 30 second increments, stirring in between. Cause I'm on top of the world. Hey, what's next? 20 minutes? What in the Joanna Gaines is happening here? I'm supposed to melt the dang chocolate, let it sit for 20 minutes? I don't have time for this. I don't have time for Christmas. 20 minutes, first with the caramel. Does every recipe take a dang hour? Mm-mm. I got things to do. A little peanut butter in the brownie cookies. Never heard any single person on planet Earth. So that's what I'm doing. I was gonna clean it. Not anymore. It's gonna take me 20 minutes just to melt the chocolate this way. Anyway, this recipe is from her newest cookbook installment, the volume thrice. And I've really been enjoying it actually. No French silk pie in sight. Well, good thing I have these 30 second increments to uh, reread the recipe 18 times because I'm supposed to melt the butter and the chocolate together, but here's what I'm gonna do instead, okay? Hear me out. I am going to add half of the butter, so half a stick of butter, and melt it all. And instead of waiting 20 minutes for it to cool, ooh, it's nice and glossy. Yeah, I'm gonna have to add more of the butter. I was gonna add the butter and let the melted chocolate kinda like cool faster by adding the butter. Do you know what I mean? I'm still gonna keep some of it out and that's how I'm going to not wait 20 minutes. Do you feel me? I said, do you feel me though? I said, can you dig it? Can you dig it? Ooh, look how delicious this looks. Oh no, oh no, what's happening? I don't know what's happening, but it, it's getting clumpy. Is this a bad sign? Oh, but what, did I overcook the chocolate? I think I overcooked the chocolate. I said, can you dig it? <laughs> can you see the chocolate? I think I overcooked it. Or I, I don't know, I'm gonna put it back in. With some more butter. I said, can you dig it? Can you dig it? I feel like Joanna Gaines can dig it. Yeah, I over melted the chocolate. Oh, did I just waste two and a half cups of chocolate? I don't 
don't think so. I think this is actually exactly how it's supposed to look and I'm just gonna keep going. You know me, I persevere, I don't give a hoot. It's just, it, it, this is perfect, I, you know. Look at it, have you ever seen melted chocolate look this good? I'm gonna transfer it to this bowl and let it cool completely for 20 minutes. You wanna lick the bowl? Okay, it's been 20 minutes, do we believe it? Quarter cup of brown sugar, twice, so half a cup there. Yes, I left this chocolate on my finger for 20 minutes. One cup of granulated sugar. Here's the kicker. I can dig it, you can dig it, she can dig it, they can dig it, we can dig it. Hey, can you dig it? That's my theme song. Three eggs going right into that scalding hot chocolate. All right, whip this up. I have a feeling these are gonna be the most heavenly cookies I've ever made in my entire life, even though I didn't follow the directions. Whip it! All right, this looks heavenly. I'm gonna take a taste test. Salmonella, I dare you. Um, I have to go a little longer. I can taste the granules, the sugar granules, so the egg needs a little more time to break it down. In the meantime, the crackers are thin. Oh yeah, these are really good. More seasoning, just me, I don't know, but I would prefer more seasoning. I feel like this is not the last time I'm gonna make these. Like this one right here, mm, yes, please, thank you. I can dig it. Throw it into a jar, neighbor gift, teacher gift, hostess gift, bring it to a party for everyone to enjoy. Oh boy, that could have been a catastrophe. Almost lifted it up while it was still going. I mean, I did lift it up while it was still going, but I caught myself. Okay, so that's good enough for me. I'm going to add one cup of flour to this. Of course, you're supposed to take a separate bowl, ruin it, to combine all the dry ingredients together and then mix them in, but I don't really care. So two tablespoons of cocoa powder. And you know what Ina Garden would do here? Hold on. I don't even know. A little teaspoon of espresso powder, okay? Ina Garden would, let's say it together, dig it. The cocoa powder just enhances the chocolatey flavor. One teaspoon of baking powder, and then a little dash of salt. This enhances the flavor as well. Oh, did I miss this before? Some vanilla extract, I'll add it now, why not? It's fine, never too late, that's what I always say. Close that, whip it up. Oh my goodness, it's Ghirardelli. Is this the end of Ghirardelli? I don't know, we're gonna find out. We're about to find out. That's it, just until it's combined, okay? Heavenly chocolate. Hmm. The batter leaves a little to be desired, not gonna lie. All right, time to uh, get these cookies on a sheet. I was looking for a spatula. I'm going to mix the rest of it together. I know you see a lot of dry bits, but you never want to over mix brownie batter or really cookies either. You don't want to over mix anything. You only want to mix just until the flour is combined because, you know, gluten and stuff. So that's what I'm going to do. A little bit of peanut butter. That just adds flavor. Okay, so Joanna Gaines is really testing my patience here. Okay. So, cookie scoop. Hers look really cool. I don't know what she did. Just like a, a honking scoop. Cause she's got like overflow, but I think that's what makes them look so rustic and cool. That doesn't do it justice. Like in the cookbook, you know? Who knows if she's the one who actually made them anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I digress. You plop them into bowls. Throw them in the freezer, fridge, freezer, I don't remember. 45 minutes, I don't have time for this. Who has time for brownie cookies? You know what my favorite brownie cookie is? Actually, crinkle cookie. And it is by none other than Ghirardelli himself. And I think those are great. You don't have to dirty five bowls making it. Actually, you kind of do. You dip it in powder, I think it's fine. Anyway, I think the added effort, especially for a holiday like Christmas, or if it's the only thing you're making, no big deal. It makes it special. I think I just overloaded myself and I didn't set proper expectations for how long things would take. Mostly because I didn't read the, <laughs> the recipes. Okay, I think I got it. This is what she does. This is her method. She takes a heaping scoop, plops it down and kind of pushes the cookie scoop down and then lifts up because that's what hers look like. Well, too little, too late, you know? I don't have any room in my fridge or freezer for those brownie cookies. 
So I thought, all right, let me take the caramels out. Couldn't find the wrappers for them anywhere. Just spent, I don't know, half my day looking for them. Guess where they were? Last place I looked, that's right. So I'm gonna clean this area up and then hopefully roll out the caramels. I'm gonna read the recipe again and see how long I had to chill it for, I don't remember. Good news, it just says to cool completely, which uh, I hope I have done. So here are the wrappers from Amazon. It's just pre-cut squares of wax paper. And uh, I think she just used a knife to cut her caramel. Oh, wow. All right, well, you know I have to take a taste test of this. I'm not a huge fan of caramel, but I mean, when in Rome, you know what I mean? I will, so I'm just gonna take it and portion it out. I don't know how big the pieces should be. I feel like that's a pretty good chunk. Also, I don't wanna be sitting here all night wrapping them, so like how my pieces are getting bigger. <laughs> All right, I'll taste the bit that's wrapped up. Ooh, so soft. Check it. I mean, is that the best consistency or what? Maybe it's not, but I feel like this is what it looked like on Instagram. Just so buttery. That wax paper came right out of it. <laughs> wow. First of all, second of all, and third of all, these caramels were a crowd pleaser. Such a hit. I'm so glad that I bought the pre-portioned squares off of Amazon that were pre-cut, pre-portioned, whatever you want to call them. There were a ton that came in one pack. I didn't use them all. I think at the end of this, I tell you how many I make. I want to say it was around 56 or something. Uh, one note that I got mostly from Alex is that it was too much for one little like plop in the mouth. I should have made them a little bit smaller. I did make them bigger because it took us like 30 minutes to wrap these and I had three extra hands helping me out most of the time. Definitely two, but sometimes three. And then, you know, I was cutting them. I couldn't fill the paper as fast as they were wrapping them. And keeping them in the fridge just keeps them firm. And so they don't, <laughs> that's Wolfgang, they don't stick to the, um, wrapping paper, whatever it's called, the wax paper as much. Um, so if you do leave them room temperature, because, you know, I put them out on the boards and everything, the treat boards, so people could just grab them at their leisure. But other than that, I do store them in the fridge. I did overcook it slightly. You could see on the, on the bottom of the pan when I was pouring it that there were some burned bits. I tried to keep things moving along, you know, maybe if I would have been more patient with it. So there were a couple pieces with like hard bits in it, but like the burnt bits, but it didn't change the flavor, just the texture. And it was still delicious. I had people rave about these. I had people be like, oh my gosh, are these homemade? Like what? They're so good. So I would definitely recommend making them. I'll try to link everything below. I want to say this is like when I found this, someone posted that it was from an old church cookbook, you know, and some of the best recipes are found in things like that. So I was happy to find it myself. 139 pieces of caramel. All right. I was completely off 139 pieces. Wow. Okay. So then we made snickerdoodles and I thought about these. I actually had like four more recipes that I didn't get to making. So I'm not sure why I landed on this one, why I was like, yeah, this is a great one to try out. I just think I haven't had snickerdoodles in a long time. I really want, wish I would have made the protein kiss cookies, but whatever, I always have next time. The kids obviously helped me out with these and many other cookies, which is part of the fun of holiday baking. Um, so whatever I put in, two eggs, two sticks of butter, little splash of vanilla, some sugar in there, you know, the usual suspects. It's nothing crazy. These are ingredients that you probably have on hand. Uh, the cinnamon sugar on the outside, just make these, you know. Not very time intensive. Are, they're not my favorite cookie, but it's a good staple to have where they definitely got eaten. I want to say that. And the recipe on Pinterest, you know, Pinterest makes everything look better, but the cookies were so much thicker I don't know. I also, it calls for cream of tartar. I guess that's the only weird ingredient. And I did buy a new container of it. I come to find out, flower shower, I have like four containers of cream of tartar. When I was looking for a knee seed, that's what I found. Cream of tartar. Like 17 containers. I'm like, why do I have this many? I use it when I do make homemade Play-Doh. That's pretty much it. Surprisingly, I had two recipes at, like for the holiday baking that calls for cream of tartar. So I was like, okay, pleasantly surprised that I could get rid of some of this stuff since I have so much, right? Um, okay, so now I'm just rolling the balls into dough. I will say chilling the dough is necessary. Sometimes 
you can go without doing it. But in this case, it's definitely necessary. And I chilled it and it, I feel like it still didn't give me the rise or, you know, that like Pinterest worthy photo where it's like an inch thick, not worth it. I mean, not, not worth it. It just, it didn't do it. <laughs> I wish it would have been worth it to wait, but it wasn't. Those were the brownie cookies that I had waiting in my fridge for 45 minutes and I finally rolled them out uh, just to, ooh, sorry, plop them in the oven. I'm trying to take my earrings off because Wolfgang is uh, on my lap. And anyway, so here as like the end of the night when I, I don't know what I was doing here. <laughs> but oh, Wolfgang wants to say hi now. Hold on. Ah, blah, blah, blah. So sweet, right? So I just love this view. I wanted to capture it. It's just like the hustle and bustle of the holiday season. And really, this is what it's all about. The kids were playing, having fun. It just really warms my heart. And these were the finished cookies. These were some of, oh my gosh, underrated for sure. People didn't know what to expect when they bit into these. The inside was gooey, chewy, delicious. Outside was hard and crusty. Oh, so I don't, I'm speechless. That's how good they were. It worth the effort, I'll say that. And they still don't even look as good as Joanne's. Here's the second batch. They look nothing like they do in her book. But to be fair, uh, I'm not Joanna Gaines, so I don't know. <laughs> Alex says I should make a cookbook. What you see is what you get. These cookies might look good, and they do. Let's take a little taste test. Oh yeah, that's really good. Crunchy on the outside creamy gooiness on the inside. That's how I like my brownies. But they don't look anything like they do in the cookbook. Joanna Gaines is at it again. I chilled the dough overnight. I may have gone a little overboard on that, but it was like midnight. <laughs> so I wasn't gonna stay up for another batch. But I rolled some more out, rolled them into the cinnamon sugar mixture. The dough is extremely firm, so hopefully these don't flatten out like before. I guess we'll find out in like 11 minutes. I don't know if I slightly overcooked these, but uh, I mean, obviously they look way better. I don't know what I'm thinking, I'm trying to move this. They look way better than the super flattened out ones yesterday. I mean, do they? I don't know, they're still pretty flat. Oh my gosh, baking with kids, am I right? Anyway, these, whatever. I mean, they taste fine, it's a snicker dude. I don't always cook these often, and I'm reminded why. Like, eh, no, it's not my favorite cookie, but okay, I made them. <laughs> I'm needing to finish up these Christmas tree. Oh my heck, look at how melty this chocolate is. This is Ghirardelli milk chocolate melted wafers. The quality of this. I probably did two minutes in the microwave. I mean intermittently, you know, you put it in 30 seconds, you mix it. So all I'm gonna do is just plop that in. Oh, it's heaven in a bowl. I'm gonna grab two forks and just kind of coat the top of it. I don't wanna flip it because I feel like it might break. And then I'll take my forks. Oh goodness, that looks really nice. I am trying to be gentle with this. I'm gonna put it back on the parchment paper and I'm gonna repeat the process until Everything is nice and coated. Okay, listen, Joanna Gaines's brownie cookies. Make them. Make them. Worth the effort. They still don't even look as good. I know I'm not making Joanna Gaines's cookies right now, but listen, nothing I've ever made in that cookbook has been easy. <laughs> nothing she's ever put out has been simple, but it always tastes incredible, and it always uses like 17 different dishes and bowls and whatever, and I'm just like, why that, why, 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 why? And then I eat it and I think this is why, because it is superior, so much better than the crinkle cookies on the back of the Ghirardelli box. I'm going to say that, but you know what? Those are real good too. So that's saying a lot actually. Okay. So I've moved on to melting the chocolate and then dipping the peanut butter trees in there. And really you can use any cookie cutter. Obviously that goes without saying, I really wish I would have done the cat one, <laughs> at least for a few of them. I ran out of chocolate. If you're wondering how many bags I used, I used two of however big those Ghirardelli melting chocolate bags were. I think they're like 10 ounces, two of those bags. And then I ran out and then melted two more bags. See, I don't even know. See, I'm, at, I, I'm pretty sure I used two more bags. It was a lot of chocolate. And then when I was finished, I just drizzled some over top. I just picked it up with my fork and I think it gave it a nice little effect on there. 
It just you got to dress it up for Christmas, you know? You got to give it it's Christmas best, it's Sunday best. And that's what I did and absolutely delicious. I would make these again with protein powder. I'll say that. New day, same mess. I actually had to run to the grocery store again to get anise seed. Anise, whatever it's called, a rose by any other name because I realized I don't have any. I thought I had some, went through all my spices twice, count them twice. Couldn't find them anywhere. Good news and bad news to that. The good news is I did find some graham cracker crumbs because these have been out of my grocery stores for like a month. I think I bought these in Easter. I don't even know if they're still good actually. I get just, we won't even think about it. I bought these graham crackers. Don't know what we're gonna do with that. They'll probably go stale in my pantry, but I'm happy that I have these. I don't really know why. I mean, I have a food processor that I could just process the graham crackers in, but if for some reason, my mom grew up, even the walnuts, she grew up like grinding her own and she had this like handheld, like pampered chef kind of device. And I just grew up, she had a food processor, but she never wanted to use it. So I grew up thinking a food processor was like the most annoying thing to clean because that was her reason for not using it. She didn't want to clean it. Hashtag relatable. But also it's not that crazy to clean. I mean, I use mine all the time. So I'm going to whip mine up. These are rum balls. Did I say that? I'm making rum balls. Also anise cookies. That's where the anise came from. I had to run to the grocery store. I would recommend staying home. Hide your kids, hide your wife. I mean, now it's probably fine since this video is out. The and bustle is actually stay home. It's the day after Christmas. That's when everyone's going to the store to make their big returns. I worked at Twice R Us one year, short story long, and oh, I had to get rum extract too. Yeah, didn't have any rum extract. How am I supposed to make rum balls without rum extract? Impossible. I could have done almond, but it's not the same. I actually don't know where, oh, here it is. And I bought a bunch of goodies to make lasagna, my famous Christmas lasagna. It's self-imposed famous traditional Christmas lasagna. Really, it's only been a few years since I've been doing it, but it's gonna be a tradition for the rest of my life. I don't even necessarily like lasagna, but uh, good news and bad news for that. Good news was ricotta cheese was buy one get one free in the large tubs. Bad news is they were out of it, so I had to spend an arm and a leg on ricotta cheese in the small containers. Hmm. I always add more than what the recipe calls for because I don't want like a chintzy little piece of crap lasagna. I want like honkin' chonkin' this tall, this big, the whole pot plate full. Anyway, I'm Italian, can you tell? Also, that was not the point of my story. I wanted to tell you something else. <laughs> I don't remember. I'm making rum balls. <laughs> I'm just gonna get started on these rum balls. Oh, that's right, Toys R Us. I worked there, Yeah, I was seasonal. They, I think they kept me along. They asked me to stay after the season was over. It's, oh, it's always a nice honor when they do that. I was like, I don't know if I was in high school or college, one of those, I'm pretty sure I was in high. I don't think I was in high school. Oh, the years are long, but the days are short. I don't know what I'm doing because my recipe's over here. I worked at Toys R Us. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much. Employee of the decade. Yes, I was. That was such a fun job, fun and stressful. I worked there Black Friday. Black, back when Black Friday was mass chaos, the way it should be. They don't do Black Friday like they used to, probably for the best. But anyway, I worked there during that time where like we ran out of carts, it was 5 a.m. and people were lining up around the store to get their kids gifts, you know what I mean? So instead of carts, we just started handing out garbage bags. <laughs> the good old days. And so the day after Christmas, you'd think, oh, the chaos is over. Let's just go to work, a normal day. No, it wasn't normal. There were lines out the wazoo to return. All the gifts their kids didn't want or they didn't end up using. I don't really know the reason, but I do know everyone and their mom was there returning stuff that day. No one was shopping around. No one was looking for the baby alive doll then. Mostly because we were out of it for a month. All right, so rum balls. Oh my gosh, the scent of just these two ingredients transports me back to my childhood. Love it so much. Graham cracker crumbs, five ounces of evaporated milk, did any of you work retail jobs back when Black Friday was crazy? I'm also going to add four tablespoons of cornstarch to this. I kind of feel like I used to double this recipe, but I can't really remember. Like, is this gonna be enough rumbles for me? I'm not sure. 
I guess we'll find out. And then one tablespoon of cocoa powder. A little bit of vanilla extract, but I never add that. I just add double the amount of rum extract. How much of this? One to two tablespoons. So I always go on the bigger side of that, mostly because you can't have rum balls without rum extract. Although one of my aunts, she makes, let's call them almond balls, with almond extract. And instead of walnuts, she uses almonds. Actually, there is like an almond flavor liqueur, liquor. It's called something with a D, diamond. Something, it looks like a diamond. I can't remember, I don't drink. I don't know what to tell you. Anyway, that's not it. I'm gonna grind up a cup and a half of walnuts here. And I never understood if this was, you know, one and a half cups of walnuts that you grind up or one and a half cups of ground walnuts. Do you know what I mean? I don't have the answer for you, so I just don't measure it. <laughs> the texture of this, the nuts were frozen. Oh my heck, it's just so great. I wanna swim in it. This looks great. And then I'm going to melt two cups of chocolate chips. It's just one bag, one 12 ounce bag of like semi-sweet chocolate chips, but I buy mine in bulk, so I'm just gonna melt these in the microwave. 12 ounces is two cups. Oh my gosh, I've been looking for this forever. It is one of my favorite spatulas of all time. It's from the Pampered Chef, if you can believe that. My mom actually gave it to me, and man, this thing has stood the test of time. It's my favorite, and I lost it. You'll never guess where it was. Last place I looked, that's right. So to finish these off, I'm going to add in the two cups of melted chocolate. Fair warning here, Many people that try these just don't like it. This is one of my all-time favorite holiday treats, probably because I grew up with it. I don't know. But you know what? It might grow on you because Alex used to hate them. Now he loves them. <laughs> Meredith loves them. There is a healthier alternative I make that tastes very similar. Uh, obviously a little different because it's healthy, but I make them with date balls and it is like a treat then too, nature's candy. I'm gonna try to measure out a cup and a half, but it's essentially just, there you go, all of it. I don't know why I waste my time measuring things. Another recipe like that is called Pope's bread that I normally make, but my dad always makes like 700 loaves and I just can't recreate the same magic that he does. Try as I may, and one of these years I will nail it. This year I'm not even attempting, but Rum balls and Pope's Red, those are my two favorite. What's your favorite nostalgic Christmas treat? Maybe that you love, but doesn't resonate with every, everyone and they're like, wait, what the heck is this? I see a lot of these thrown away in the garbage can every year and I'm like, over it. So that's all to the batter. You just have to make sure it's like fully incorporated and mixed together. That's why the spatula makes such a difference, you know? And then I pulled out my trusty tray. My mom every year, she had special trays that she would make these on. And I guess these are my specialty trays because that's what I made them on the, uh, I don't know, every year I've had this tray anyway, last year at least. And then you roll them in sprinkles. The sprinkles are extremely important. I tried to switch it out and do festive sprinkles one year. It's just not the same. The Jimmy sprinkles, whatever the heck these are, the rainbow sprinkles, they hit a certain way and I'm keeping it classy. You know what I'm thinking? Like a mixer could have really helped me out here. I don't know why I didn't use it. I, in my head, I'm like, Oma doesn't use a mixer, my mom never, but they didn't have one. They don't have the luxuries that we do today. Somehow it tastes better when you put a little love in it. All right, good enough, I'm gonna take a taste test. You know, you gotta test out your food. Incredible. Could use more rum, just saying. My mom and grandmother, my Oma, they always splash in real rum. I don't do that. I do miss the flavor though, I'll say that. Ooh, the rum balls. This is what I live for. Ursula style, right? I did elicit the help of my children. Listen, I only asked Eleanor to help me, but Avelina, she is a helper and she comes out. She's allergic to nuts, you guys. Every nut except for peanut. It's so bizarre. And it has not been her entire life. It was as she got older, she developed this allergy. She used to eat Nutella all the time. And then she grew an allergy to an extreme. I should, well, like we have EpiPen, extreme. We have to bring it with us everywhere. Extreme allergy to, you name it, every nut, pine nuts, hazelnuts, almonds, and you guessed it, walnuts, okay? Any nut that you can think of, pecans, she's got the allergy to. So anyway, she started rolling and I was like, Alina, these have walnuts. She knew it. 
oh, that's okay. You know, and then I'll wash my hands. No problem. She washed her hands after she helped. Nope. (laughs) Sure enough. Afterwards, even after washing her hands, her eyes were swelled up, hiving everywhere. I was like, oh my heck, you guys. So I gave her a little Benadryl and she was perfectly fine an hour later. But I was like, I guess this is one way to find out if you still have allergies, you know, because some people grow out of them and we haven't had her tested in a few years. We just keep her away. (laughs) But now we're like, okay, she's definitely still allergic to walnuts. So I found that out. I guess the easy way because um, it was just like a contact way instead of her eating it and her throat swelling. And do you know what I mean? Like the easy way. So yeah, that allergy is still alive and well, (laughs) very active. So she thought washing her hands, she would be fine, but apparently not. But anyway, these are the cookies and I'm putting together a treat board for Christmas Eve. We had a lot of events this past weekend. Oh, it's been so, so, so busy, but that's what this holiday season is all about for us. We love staying busy, connecting with family and all of that good stuff. So I hope you had a lovely holiday season. I hope I was able to provide you with some new recipes that you'll maybe try in the future. Let me know if you do. And let me know if you have any bizarre recipes that I need to try in my life in the future. I would love to try some out. But other than that, I wish you a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, Happy New Year soon around the corner. And you know what? Thanks for being here. Thanks for spending time with me. Thank you for being a friend. Bye.